So, ladies and gentlemen, now we are starting with our program. When we organize this conference, we have not been sure what could we do about Afghanistan, because uh, two months ago we all witnessed what has happened, and I think a conference about migration we could not organize without touching this issue. So we started to invite people to talk about situation in Afghanistan and around Afghanistan to get information out of the first hand. So the first invitation was uh, delivered to Mr. Abdullah Abdullah. He called himself the CEO of Afghanistan. And he was uh, the chairperson of the National Reconciliation Council. Up to last Sunday, he agreed to come to Vienna, but at the end, he told me on Sunday that he is not in the position to travel to Vienna. So this is a big pity, but on the other hand, he agreed to talk to me via video yesterday. So this will be the first part to show you what he has to say about the situation at the moment in Afghanistan. And in the second part, we would like to draw your attention to the surroundings. What is going on in the countries around Afghanistan? So we have with us Deputy Foreign Minister of Tajikistan. Great pleasure that you are here. We have with us the ambassadors from Republic of Iran and from Turkey to talk with us about the challenges they have to face at the moment. So this is my proposal to you first to look what Mr. Abdullah Abdullah has to say and afterwards to talk with our colleagues that are so kind to be with us today. So let's start with the conversation from yesterday. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, thank you very much for connecting with us from Kabul. It's really a great honor for us uh, to be with you and to have this important conversation. Excellency, you know, over the past two months, we all have been following the situation uh, in Afghanistan. Of course, uh, I think all over the world, many people were watching what is happening there. But of course, having you, we would be very um, keen to hear in your words, what is the situation at the moment in Afghanistan? Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Director General uh, Spindelega. Uh, thank you for providing this opportunity. Uh, and I think it's a timely event. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I wanted to uh, to participate in person, but uh, it's good to have this opportunity uh, to be with you. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, earlier, the expectation was that there will be negotiations and negotiated settlement. Uh, the events evolved in such a way uh, that Taliban took over uh, and then without uh, finalizing a peace deal. Uh, that created a, a, a sort of an atmosphere uh, throughout the country, uh, especially in the cities and in Kabul, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, the whole world has witnessed, uh, and uh, an atmosphere of uncertainty, uh, concerns uh, for the population. Now two months, or, 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 or shortly more than two months, uh, from the uh, recent uh, development. Uh, still, unfortunately, the challenges of Afghanistan are as big as you can imagine. Politically speaking, the uh, Taliban have formed their own government, uh, which is exclusive Taliban government. Uh, and uh, that's that part. Uh, the most precarious situation uh, is related to the humanitarian circumstances 
humanitarian crisis, and one call it uh, humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, there was humanitarian situation earlier as a result of uh, more than four decades of conflict, uh, poverty, uh, drought, uh, in other natural uh, causes. Uh, but uh, with the current situation, with the with the administration or system, administrative system collapsed, uh, that has exacerbated the situation manifold. Uh, and people are moving towards uh, the neighboring countries, uh, the rush towards the airport, uh, everybody has uh, seen. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenging situation, uh, which uh, again, it's, it was uh, further complicated uh, with, uh, with uncertainty about certain policies. What we have heard from you so far is, uh, of course, this is... Uh, a real exceptional situation in Afghanistan at the moment. So may I ask you, um, you have been, uh, when I was in Kabul, the chairperson of the National Reconciliation Council of Afghanistan. And um, I think uh, at that time, I have felt this, you tried to, to bring all the parts together, you tried to uh, give a future perspective for the country. Wouldn't there be a need especially at this moment, for such a national reconciliation? Uh, I think the, uh, it's necessary. Uh, there, are, there could be two scenarios. Uh, one scenario, uh, since uh, Taliban have uh, taken all over uh, and they have established their own emirate, uh, they will say we will do it our own way. Uh, that, will not mean, that will not mean uh, uh, stability. That will not mean... Uh, future for the citizens of this country, there will be another reality. They have established their own interim government at the moment. Uh, they make their plan clear for the rest of the people of Afghanistan. What's the future political roadmap uh, for the country? Uh, what's the role of the other people? One way is the way of uh, Taliban thinking. There are Afghanistan as a diverse a diverse, realistic society, uh, and also different minorities in the in the country, Shiite and Sunni. Uh, what's the role of women? What's the what's the future of the what if the people will decide based on one person, one vote, their future? Uh, how would be how would they, would they deal with the rest of the challenges which are which are there? Uh, so and then they start a sort of a national discourse or national dialogue. Uh, that has not happened at the moment. Of course, some would say that it's uh, it's early, it's only a few weeks. That's true, uh, but uh, that's what uh, what has uh, created uncertainty for the people. I'm talking about the citizens of the country. Uh, inclusivity is not just being inclusive in the government. It's uh, it's inclusivity of different ideas. Um, uh, of society, of civil society, certain freedoms of the uh, people, uh, and uh, uh, in all of that. Uh, so uh, uh, we are yet to see that idea emerging uh, from the current uh, Taliban administration. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Most interesting to hear that. Uh, may I add another question? Of course, looking at the moment to Afghanistan and humanitarian crisis situation, and uh, of course, economy is going down and all the different challenges you have to face at the moment. Uh, international community is reacting, giving especially uh, money to international organizations like UNHCR or IOM, uh, and starting, of course, uh, to take care about the livelihood of people. but. Uh, Maybe you could give us a perspective. Is there anything that international community has overlooked so that you would bring up this issue to the attention of everybody here in our Vienna Migration Conference? The, uh, I cannot exaggerate on the dimensions of the, uh, the crisis that the country is faced with or the challenge that the country is faced with. Uh, then, of course, uh, responsibility of the uh, administration in Kabul, the uh, Taliban authorities, 
is to look at it with a sense of urgency uh, and, uh, and to take certain actions uh, which will have an impact on the ability of the international partners to deliver their assistances. For example, uh, if the NGOs in international organizations, uh, they feel safe and, and they, they find it a safe environment and also a sound environment uh, for their activities, uh, of course, they will be able to, 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 to deliver. Uh, if, they, if, they think under, uh, if they feel under pressure one way or another, uh, that will uh, ha have an impact uh, at work. The, uh, the recent conference, uh, uh, which uh, international conference, which uh, uh, there were pledges of over 1 billion euros of our humanitarian ass assistances to Afghanistan is welcomed. So, but it's, it's important that everybody is looking at it with a sense of urgency. I know that there are challenges of legitimacy, recognition, and so on and so forth, but one has to look at it. The Taliban here and also our international partners should, should take the middle road, how to, how to move forward, how to engage the Taliban while uh, uh, to, to show willingness on, the, on, the, on creating circumstances for, for our own citizens, as well as for, for our partners to be able to work together uh, in dealing with this, uh, uh, with this challenge. Uh, earlier, there were certain policies, certain mechanisms existed in that regard, if I, if I, if I may I consider the issue of migration, we had the direct uh, executive committee, uh, which uh, ICPMD was a member of that. It was, uh, it was a mechanism which was functioning well because all stakeholders were there. International partners, donors, um, uh, international financial institutions, NGOs, governments, in the absence of such mechanisms, only the goodwill from the international community will not will not do uh, will, will not do the job. So the going finding ways of working together on the basis of uh, uh, of uh, common goals uh, will will be the starting point. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. May I uh, touch the issue of migration? You have named it, um, as you rightly said. Of course, we have been in a very constructive dialogue and we have been starting uh, to help the government of Afghanistan with these migration resource centers and so on. At the moment, of course, many, of course, also in the Vienna Migration Conference, we think about what will be the situation upcoming. Are there uh, flaws coming from Afghanistan to Europe, to the neighboring countries? What will people do in Afghanistan after a certain while of um, observing uh, how the situation is running? Do you think there will be a big outflow from Afghanistan? Uh, unfortunately, the way that it looks at the moment, uh, the rush towards the neighboring countries, especially two neighboring countries, uh, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and the Islamic Republic, Republic of Iran towards their borders, uh, their attempts to cross uh, the, uh, the uh, crossing points illegally by thousands of people on daily basis, while there are, there are uh, uh, of course, demand for visas, which, is, uh, which, uh, which the neighboring countries have, have been dealing with it. So there, there will be an outflow, unfortunately, unless uh, Taliban make decisions about the political side of the issue, about the administrative side of the issue, about the, about the role of uh, uh, people, minorities, and in, in all of that, and also develop a policy. Uh, what is their policy towards migration? Uh, and uh, uh, so the outflow from Afghanistan, big outflow from Afghanistan, uh, it's, not, it's not a potential, it's already taking place. Of course, we have to recognize that and we are following uh, what could be done, especially in the neighboring countries, how to support people coming from Afghanistan and how to deal with the situation. You know, Your Excellency, our discussion in the Vienna Migration Conference is about partnership, partnership between countries of origin, countries of transit and the countries of destination. 
do you think uh, that uh, partnership concept for Afghanistan could take place? And do you think there is uh, also uh, potential for Afghanistan to be part of such a uh, migration partnership in the future? I think it was it was developing. And once again, I want to uh, thank you yourself uh, in IC. Uh, in PD uh, for its partnership and, and other other uh, international organizations like uh, we're working together uh, with the uh, uh, UNHCR, IUN and, and, and UNSF and other organizations like part of a family uh, and uh, that was in a relatively uh, easy circumstances. Today the situation is of course challenging. Uh, the, the, the Taliban authorities should show the ability uh, that they could be a partner uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, our international partners. Uh, there is so much goodwill still in spite of the, in spite of the uh, fatigue, donors fatigue, whatever you call it, uh, the persistence of the situation for, for over four, four decades. Uh, in, 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 in earlier in, in, in uh, 2015, 16, 17, we were we were witness to the return of refugees. So dealing with the returnees was the main issue. Uh, and uh, with uh, uh, ICMPD, we we developed uh, a policy of uh, a comprehensive policy for migration. That was a that was a, an example of uh, uh, partnership. Uh, uh, that is needed even more. Whether they will show that ability uh, in willingness uh, or, 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 or the capacity uh, to, to, to move towards it. What is, what is happening uh, uh, as well as we are losing capacity, we are losing skilled uh, personnel, professionals are leaving. These are, these are the situations which has to be addressed in order for us to be, to be a uh, migration through partnership. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, I remember well when we had discussions in Kabul and also in Geneva, how to deal with the whole situation. And uh, I totally uh, would like to recognize your positive role in that. And I think uh, something was built up uh, up to before the Taliban took over that was really remarkable. But anyhow, I think most important at the moment is how to come back to a dialogue and how to uh, bring in all the different uh, issues of migration. Because at the moment, what we can see, this is the time for the smugglers and the human traffickers. They will try to convince people to spend a lot of money just to go outside, to go somewhere without a real concrete perspective. So fighting against uh, these criminal networks. Uh, this would be one of the issues also where Afghanistan could work very close together with uh, other countries. What do you think about that? No, I think uh, you are right. Uh, the, there will be people which will, be, which will try to take advantage uh, of, the, of the situations of the people. Uh, and uh, that has to be, that has to be Dealt with, and this is happening, unfortunately, uh, before our before our eyes. Uh, but uh, uh, while this is one important side uh, of the issue, uh, the the more important side of it is the uh, people should trust that they have a future in this country. If they if if they are not if they are not uh, if they are not sure about your future. Uh, if the future is only uncertainty, then they will they, they, they will they will resort to every means in order to in order to get to to get out. Uh, these are these are the things the broader circumstances and conditions on the ground in the improvement that will 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 uh, will, uh, will will be important and critical. And in this respect, the uh, the actions by the Taliban authorities it matters much more than, than their words. Uh, and uh, people, because the people have gone through different experiences and they are going through different experiences on a daily basis today as well, uh, the words will not be uh, sufficient. Uh, so they, uh, uh, the, the job is a, is a daunting job. 
Um, it is it is doable, uh, but uh, but uh, everybody has to look at it with a sense of urgency. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Looking a little bit to the future, uh, what would you think should be done for the next step? Because many states at the moment are very hesitant to get in touch with the Taliban regime. Uh, but anyhow, I think to work together will be a few, uh, one of the, the main issues also for the future. But anyhow, what would you be your advice for the different states to come uh, to a solution with uh, cooperation or not cooperation? What do you think about that? I would say that uh, I would encourage engagement. Uh, of course, uh, Taliban will, will expect uh, recognition. Uh, that might not be realistic uh, while, while the situation is as it is in, in all dimensions of it. Uh, but uh, engagement and direct engagement uh, while, uh, while pressing on the points uh, which are important for the people of Afghanistan, uh, as well as for our international partners, and also uh, in parallel to that being able to deliver on the, uh, on the basis of the needs of the people of Afghanistan and encourage Taliban to create conditions and circumstances so uh, those who are willing will be able to, uh, to help more. Uh, that will be uh, that will be like uh, like the the path that I will uh, I will I will I will advise. Um, Taliban expectations might not be realistic at this stage, um, and also um, for for Taliban also to 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 make drast drastic changes. Um, so so the situation looks normal, like as a normal state, uh, rather than uh, a country being to be being taken over. By, 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 by a military group, uh, by, by a combatant group, uh, which is, which is what, what, what it looks like uh, at the moment. Uh, so the, their, their actions uh, to gain the trust of the people, uh, 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 and so the people will, will, will not have to leave the country. I will, I'm most hesitant to encourage anybody to leave the country, but it's also very difficult for me to convince anybody under the current circumstances. So it's the dilemma. What the international partners can do is to engage in a, in a constructive manner, uh, but uh, also for the Taliban to be realistic about, about their expectations from the international community. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, talking about the future, what do you think? Where will we stand uh, in one year from now? What will happen within this next year? Because this will be very crucial for the development whether to find a way to cooperate or maybe to find a national consensus in Afghanistan, to form a government, uh, taking all the different parts uh, inside. What do you think? What could happen within this next year? Uh, the, uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, a better scenario will be to, uh, to see a positive trend emerging uh, in all sides, in all sides of life. Uh, uh, a, a political future for the for the people of the country, uh, improvement in their uh, conditions of life, uh, and uh, in creating hope for the people. Uh, uh, that will be that will be one scenario. Uh, there is also, uh, unfortunately, another scenario which uh, the challenges gets compounded: poverty, unemployment. Uh, we have the drought, which is still. The country is suffering because of that migration, internally displaced people, drug addiction, and all of that in a paralysis in the administration. Uh, the in all of that, um, uh, I hope that this this scenario will will not will not develop. Uh, but I I am very concerned to be honest. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. It was a great pleasure to be with you. Thanks a lot for your uh, really thoughtful reflections and your wisdom. I hope that we will have a discussion within the Vienna Migration Conference concerning Afghanistan uh, with these inputs you have given to us. And I'm quite sure that everybody is totally interested uh, to be in touch with you. Hopefully next time you can join us in Vienna. You have a standing invitation. And we would like, of course, to see you in person very soon. Thank you so much, Your Excellency.
Uh, thank you, Director <laughs> General Espendaliga. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for your efforts. Uh, Vienna Migration Conference, uh, this flagship uh, conference this year, especially for Afghanistan, uh, was important and is important. Uh, and I congratulate you for the successful uh, event. I wish you well, looking forward to seeing you in person uh, one way or another and working together uh, on the issues which, uh, which are uh, of global scale and dimensions that Afghanistan at this stage, unfortunately, has uh, come one, once again at the center of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. The same. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, excuse us for the bad quality, but uh, we had three times a total interruption. It's not easy to get in touch with Afghanistan today, but I think uh, it is most important to get a voice out of Kabul uh, and to have direct contact. So with that, we would like to go to the second part, discussing the situation. And I would like to invite the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Tajikistan, Mr. Sharaf Sherali Soda, to join me here on the podium. Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you. And uh, we would like to talk about situation in the neighboring countries, especially Tajikistan. Uh, we had a chat last night, and I am aware of many thousands that have been going to Tajikistan. But the situation is not easy for this country, <laughs> facing also <laughs> their own <laughs> economic issues. <laughs> Uh, excuse us, <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, you will be on the stage very soon, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at the moment we would like to talk about Tajikistan. Uh, I think uh, Tajikistan is hosting a lot of people, but they will come very soon to the end of capacities, and this is what we would like to talk to you uh, and to hear from your side what is the situation at the moment. Your Excellency, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Schmidlager. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, uh, the fate of uh, Afghanistan cannot leave Tajikistan indifferent for several reasons. First, so we have a lengthy border of 1,400 kilometers with Afghanistan. The second is we have a common history, common culture, and common language. So our countries have, mute, have made huge contribution to the development of uh, human development and civilization in the uh, history of um, uh, human. And uh, the third is, of course, the security and uh, refugees. Uh, it should be noted that for more, more than uh, 40 years, so the blood of um, Afghans has been spilled in the land of uh, Afghanistan. And, um, uh, almost every day, on a daily basis, uh, innocent people uh, are killed, which is very regrettable for us. And uh, the situation in this country continues to be extremely difficult. So, unfortunately, there is every reason to predict this kind of uh, uh, situation, because in terms of security and in terms of social political areas. The violent uh, rise of uh, Taliban uh, cannot guarantee the establishment of peace and stability in this country. And uh, we are expecting further escalation of uh, situation uh, and also uh, armed conflict between the several groups in Afghanistan. In the previous years of the rule of Taliban in the 90s, so the northern part of Afghanistan was out of the control of Taliban. And uh, these parts served as the buffer zones for Central Asian countries while providing uh, relative stability and security in Central Asian thousand uh, borders. Now, unfortunately, the situation has changed radically. So this part already inhabited mainly uh, by non Pushtuns, now are turning into the springboard for the Taliban. 
So it should be mentioned that the Taliban is the, especially and exclusively, is a Pashtun movement. So not take into account the, uh, the interest of all uh, segments of Afghanistan population. Uh, ensure it's very difficult to ensure the stability uh, and socio-economic development of, of Afghanistan. Uh, in this regard, so we are, uh, I would say, uh, we are also in the forefront of the huge, I mean, challenges coming from Afghanistan, and uh, we are working closely with our neighboring countries how to manage this difficult process of migration, of uh, illegal drug trafficking, so influx of weapons. So that's, that's our, our vision. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Just talking about partnership, uh, first question would be, is there a need for a regional organization in the surroundings of Tajikistan with your neighboring countries just about uh, how to handle these migration flaws and how to react from a regional point of view. And the second question would be, what could be the partnership with European countries? What could we do just to support you in the right way? Because uh, this is crucial. We, nobody has uh, really interest that people are fleeing to Tajikistan and from there to other countries and uh, a long flow of migration uh, is leading people to somewhere. So I think uh, this would be crucial to know from your perspective, mm -hmm. please. Yes, uh, thank you. You know, our president, His Excellency Mr. Mali Rahman, has been always advocating for uh, Afghan cause for many years, actually. It was on the initiative of uh, His Excellency President of Tajikistan, uh, for the first time, the head of Shanghai Cooperation Organization and Collective Security Treaty Organization to, this, uh, to discuss the situation on Afghanistan. So the majority of participants and the head of member state uh, noted that the peace and stability is impossible without the forming the inclusive government in Afghanistan. As well as the, also they have noted that uh, so the free expression, the government should be formed on the free expression of interest of and will of uh, Afghan people, not by, I mean, the with one particular ethnic groups. Uh, in terms of uh, Tajikistan, so we are uh, already, for your information, we are already received more than 15,000 refugees. But I would like to stress that the Tajikistan, with its limited capacity and resources, uh, is, uh, I would say, it's facing a incredible, uh, a lot, a huge challenges uh, to receive the refugees. Also, they strengthen the border, also they pr protect and defend the borders, and also, um, uh, I would say to combat the influx of uh, weapons, also uh, some threats from uh, narco trafficking, etc. So, uh, Tajikistan, despite these facts, Tajikistan still uh, providing electricity to Af in order to help the Afghan people. So, we are also uh, willing to, to provide all our communications means, like economic corridors, we have a seven bridge with Afghanistan uh, to provide the humanitarian assistance to the uh, Afghan, to Afghan people. But uh, not to the, but uh, it should be noted that they make, we should we have to make it sure that uh, this assistance should be directed to these long-suffering Afghan people rather than terrorist groups. So it's clear uh, for us that um, the, the um, only building a, in, an inclusive government can ensure the uh, stability and peace and socio-economic development of, the, of Afghanistan. So uh, in also the world community should uh, must push Taliban to open the access to all provinces 
For instance, uh, there is no, no humanitarian agencies, neither uh, um, mass media in the Panjshir Valley. We don't have a reliable information what is happening there, as well as in other regions of, the, of the Afghanistan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. I would like now to invite both ambassadors from Iran and uh, from Turkey, His Excellency Mr. Abbas Ardekani, uh, the ambassador of uh, Islamic Republic of Iran, and His Excellency Mr. Ahmed Gül, ambassador and permanent representative of the permanent mission of Turkey to the United Nations here in Vienna. Welcome, Thank gentlemen. You. I would like to start with you, Mr. Adekani, Your Excellency, uh, we know Iran has a 720-kilometer border with Afghanistan. Eight, and eight, eight, 780 kilometers? No. 815. 815. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very Sorry. much. <laughs> this is also to learn something about the reality. But anyhow, this is a very long border, let me put it like that, uh, with Afghanistan, and you are totally experienced knowing uh, what it is about to host so many Afghan people, because in the past, many have been going to Iran to look for workplaces, to work in the construction sector, but because of the sanctions situation in Iran is really difficult at the moment, and now this crisis is coming, uh, of course, to a new stage. Many people will flee to Iran. And uh, my point of view is, of course, how can you handle the situation? And what is uh, especially the need for Iran to get also the support from Europe and other countries? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shibinelager, for, for inviting me. It's a great pleasure and honor <coughs> for me to be with you <coughs> today uh, to discuss among other issues, the most important issue of the humanitarian crisis of Afghanistan, <clears throat> which has been uh, the result of many facts, established facts, which I may elaborate more later on. But <clears throat> uh, responding your uh, pertinent question, as you have rightly mentioned, we have been during the last four decades uh, the host of <clears throat> more than three million Afghans. We have been hosting some other uh, nationals of some other countries, but uh, more than, at least more than three millions of Afghan refugees has been, have been our guests during the last four decades. Um, and it has been done <clears throat> despite many economic and social problems that uh, we have been facing with as a result of uh, uh, different difficulties uh, like uh, imposed war, unjust sanctions, and unilateral act of violence as others. We have been uh, hosting them uh, on, on a moral basis and also uh, in the light of our uh, historical relationship with Afghanistan, our brothers and sisters. And when uh, they are in a dire situation, we, we think that they are a part of our society. Just to give you an example uh, regarding the humanitarian assistance, um, we have been rendering lots of humanitarian assistance to the peoples in need inside Afghanistan as well. Um, I can report to you that uh, after the tragic terrorist incident occurred in Kandahar and Kunduz by Daesh, which is another ramification of the current uh, state of affairs in Afghanistan, we have been sent by now nine uh, huge packs of humanitarian aids, the ninth of which has been delivered, uh, which was uh, nine, uh, 25 tons of humanitarian goods and stuffs from medical stuffs to food stuffs and others. We have also been uh, uh, offering <coughs> our assistance and readiness to transfer the humanitarian goods to deliver to the people in need in Afghanistan. So as we have some, some ports, uh, through seaports, uh, road uh, 
uh, and the others, and even uh, by air uh, planes, we can transfer the humanitarian aids of the, the international communities, the Europeans, to be delivered to the, to the people of Afghanistan who are facing with a miserable situation at this juncture. Uh, I, I am confident that nobody hesitates that the current critical situation in Afghanistan is the direct result of the uh, U.S. intervention uh, and its irresponsible withdrawal and with its allies. Uh, when they uh, in, entered Afghanistan 20 years ago, uh, they brought catastrophe. And when they withdrew, they left calamity for Afghans. And this is established fact, which should be taken, seriously taken into consideration. Uh, and as I mentioned, now we are facing with the rise of terrorist groups like Daesh, who, uh, who knows nothing but killing innocent peoples and prayers. <clears throat> and this is a matter of grave concern, and I think everybody should be worried about, and we have been warning this uh, time and again from the past, since, since at least since some years ago. Uh, coming to the, uh, your question, the, the need, um, unfortunately, it's regrettable that uh, out of the helps and assistance that we are receiving from the international organizations, the donors, uh, while we are uh, giving every assistance from educational to uh, medical assistance to our brothers and sisters who are living with us in, uh, in Iran, only 7% of it has been covered by the help of international organizations and the uh, donors. Um, just as a case in point, we have offering uh, to 700,000 of Afghans to study in our own uh, schools. Tens of thousands of Afghans are studying in our universities. And the fact is that we cannot differentiate between the cost that we are paying for our own people and Afghans. It is being spent uh, out of our regular budget, our normal uh, cost, and that's the problem that we, we think at first structure, my, my demand would be to increase the 7% to a little bit more. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's at least, I think, we have lots of things to say about this, this rate. <clears throat> uh, the financial assistance <clears throat> is the first and foremost <clears throat> uh, assistance that we are <clears throat> welcoming. The second one, I think, every equipment, tools that is necessary for the livelihood of the peoples, from education to medical tools and equipment to, uh, to furthering uh, more and, and creation of the jobs, which, we, uh, which uh, will be mostly welcome um, to, to work in that perspective. Uh, just regarding the financial asset, may I uh, refer to one point. The point that I'm highlighting the financial assistance is that uh, as a result of the uh, inhumane sanctions by the U.S., we have uh, our assets, uh, which amounted to tens of billions of euros in other foreign banks, has been, have been frozen, and we have not been allowed even to use that money to buy vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, for Afghan refugees in us, inside our countries. We have been demanding times and again through different channels to let us and allow us to use our own money to buy medical stuffs, COVID-19 vaccines for Afghan refugees, and it's, um, it's more than a shame for, for some. Um, the, the final uh, point on the help and assistance, if I may elaborate, is about the, the, the framework of the help of the donors. Normally, it is being framed in the, in the format of uh, projects, mid-term or long-term projects. 
Certainly, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable one in, in normal instances, but at emergency situations like the one that are, we are facing now, I think um, it may not be helpful to, to go through the, the projects, but rather to, to give the, the necessary needs and equipments directly to, to, to be used for the Afghan refugees. Thank you for the first question. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for giving us some insights about the experience and needs of Iran. <coughs> May I now turn to Turkey, Your Excellency. Uh, knowing you quite well, we would like, of course, uh, uh, to reflect a little bit about the situation in Turkey. We know Turkey is hosting globally most refugees all over the world. Uh, so uh, I think this is exceptional what to do uh, if there is a big flaw from Afghanistan also uh, entering uh, to Turkey. We know that your president announced you have had about 300,000 Afghans at the moment in your country, but maybe you could give us a little bit uh, uh, a reflection about what is happening and, and what kind of challenges you have faced at the moment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Director. Uh, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before uh, uh, trying to answer your question, I have to tell that it was uh, really unfortunate uh, to hear what we have heard from a minister of the host country of the ICMPD concerning my country. And uh, I take exception and I reject them, and those words are unacceptable. Uh, we are not blackmailing anyone neither our neighbor Greece nor anyone else. Uh, we are simply reminding all our interlocutors, partners, uh, their responsibility. Because, and uh, that will bring me to my, uh, to my first, uh, first uh, point, as your concept note referred exactly, uh, you are talking about the stretch capabilities of the, uh, of the receiving countries. In the case of my country, our capacity has not only been stretched, but it's exhausted. We are hosting 4 million, uh, 4 million uh, Syrian refugees, almost 3.7, and then plus others uh, in Turkey for more than 10 years in the case of Syrians. I will not go into details, uh, but only one, one, uh, one figure is uh, very important for me. 700,000 Syrian babies are born in Turkey during the last 10 years. 700,000. We are providing health care, security, education, and what so in the best possible conditions. And uh, I really cannot accept my country being presented as doing nothing but only blackmailing people. Uh, so, anyway, we will continue to remind our partners their responsibilities, which I will be doing again uh, today, taking the opportunity uh, you are uh, offering to us. I know today's focus is Afghanistan, but for my country, uh, carrying this burden for so long, I, I, I want to make a very uh, brief uh, introduction before going to the uh, to the uh, Afghanistan issue. Uh, as I said, for my people, uh, Mr. Director, for my people, the cooperation, international cooperation, uh, extended so far was not uh, sufficient and efficient. We are not satisfied with that. And we are telling in every fora that Turkey alone uh, cannot be expected to shoulder this responsibility uh, alone again. So uh, I repeat this call uh, today. Uh, if I may, since the beginning of the Syrian uh, issue, we have been underlining mainly three issues, which personally I believe that are also relevant in the context of the Afghan crisis. Uh, one, ensuring fair and responsible burden sharing in all relevant aspects. Second, necessity of addressing the root causes of illegal migration and enhancing, and enhancing 
the possibilities for legal migration. I mean, creating more legal pathways uh, for people. Uh, uh, I think that I think that uh, for Turkey now the priority is uh, in the uh, safe and voluntary return of refugees uh, to their to their uh, homelands. In this part. Uh, there is a lot uh, to be discussed, but I would like to limit myself uh, to the uh, parameters of this uh, discussion. I will not go into, into details. On Afghanistan, Mr. Director General, uh, previous distinguished speakers highlights, highlighted many of the points. We, uh, in Turkey, we have uh, two main lines. Uh, we are following two main uh, lines. A gradual engagement with Taliban uh, is necessary, and we need to scale up our humanitarian efforts. In this context, we think that particularly Pakistan and Iran must be supported, and uh, the efforts of the United Nations calling for unconditional help uh, to uh, Afghanistan uh, must be uh, supported. We strongly believe that the issue of recognition uh, shall not prevent anyone from creating pragmatic channels of dialogue with Taliban. This is what we are doing, Mr. Director General. Last week, we hosted uh, the acting foreign minister of Taliban uh, in Ankara. We will continue our engagement. We have kept open our embassy. Uh, in, in, in Kabul. Uh, colleagues are working very closely with NGOs uh, and other uh, Red Crescent uh, on the ground. And we believe that uh, engagement on humanitarian issues may open up other channels of communication uh, with uh, Taliban. And, uh, and then that can enable safe uh, uh, humanitarian uh, operations. So, uh, last point, if I may, Mr. Director General. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, we are not fully able and capable of passing our message clear to our international partners. Perhaps in a more clear way, for us now, uh, this is the general feeling of the Turkish population. For us, enough is really enough. And uh, regarding the future, uh, no false expectations should be created. Uh, we have exhausted uh, our limits, and Turkish people and, uh, will not uh, accept to take further burden uh, anymore. Uh, then uh, we, we invite all our international partners for an efficient but genuine uh, partnership addressing all the aspects I have just uh, mentioned. To conclude, Mr. Director General, I hope that at next year conference we will sit in a more comfortable way in our in our seats here, and uh, we will be able to discuss a bit more efficient international cooperation, genuine international cooperation in addressing such uh, important humanitarian issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for giving us some insights about situation in Turkey and about expectations. Uh, I would like now to turn uh, to open up to the floor and to get some questions or comments from your side as well as from our followers via uh, internet. So Cecilia, she will moderate that so that we really can look forward who can take the floor. Please, Cecilia. Thank you very much. Um, yes, as we just said, we will take some questions from the floor. Uh, I would ask you, when you take the floor, to please uh, state your name and your uh, institution, what country. Uh, and we also would like to ask you to keep uh, your questions or comments short. So we would have like a two, two minute time limit. So, but please, I would, I'm looking around for the first one to make a comment or, or ask a question. On this panel, someone has to break the ice, I think. So, oh, there, please, gentleman there. 
Their microphone is coming there for you. If you could just state your, your name and... and yes, yes, hello, my name is David Novotny. I work at the Martin Center in Brussels. I have a specific question to uh, Mr. Gunn. Um, just following up on what you said, do I understand correctly that you are excluding the possibility of a renewal of the EU -Tur Turkey deal? Thank you. To me. Uh, Sorry, could you, anything? could you repeat? Possibly. Nobody understood. The question, please. If, if the possibility of a renewal of the EU Turkey deal is, is being excluded by, by uh, a Turkish ambassador, if I understood correctly. Can I? Thank you very much. Um, I, I was planning to, to get a few questions uh. together before handing back, if that is fine for, for you. Uh, please. Uh, <laughs> please, John, if you can still state your whole, whole name, yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, good morning. My name is John Buzatil. I'm, I'm from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in Malta. Um, I, I heard uh, the question from Michel Spindelager to Abdullah Abdullah about the engagement with the Taliban. Um, uh, and the reply was that he expects from Abdullah Abdullah that he expects engagement, but recognition might be challenging, of course. Um, I was wondering what the views of the panelists are about this question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm scanning the room. Anybody who would like to take the floor for a question in addition? Otherwise, we will turn to the panel. Um, we basically had uh, uh, the two, two questions uh, from, from the audience. The first was especially you, your views, Mr. Ambassador, on the, on the EU-Turkey deal or a future EU-Turkey deal in relation to what you, what you have said before. And also uh, a question to the whole panel. Um, regarding uh, engagement with the Taliban in, in future cooperation uh, with that country. So, please, I think we start with Mr. Ambassador, right? Please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, I've lost my friend who put the question. Uh, yes, the, 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 the answer is yes. Uh, Turkey uh, is, is a candidate country of the European Union. Uh, and then, of course, we have our dialogue channels. Uh, open, uh, which we are making use uh, just to, uh, to to repeat our expectations to further uh, cooperate. Revitalization of the uh, Turkey-EU deal, I, I think you are referring to the 18th of March 2016 uh, deal. Uh, of course, uh, it should be, uh, it should be uh, updated uh, when and if necessary. And, uh, but let me remind you that this deal uh, uh, includes uh, not only migration issue, many, many other things. Uh, and then we hope that progress will be made on uh, every aspect uh, uh, of the deal. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, we are also addressing uh, these issues with our immediate neighbor, Greece and we will continue uh, to do so. Uh, the, the issue is uh, we have uh, to find the best ways uh, to work together. If I may add one more thing, and uh, I deliberately not entered into, into that point, we are also addressing with the EU the issue of voluntary and safe return of uh, refugees uh, to their uh, homeland. For example, uh, we have uh, built 40, 45,000 uh, houses uh, in the parts of Syria which have been cleared of terrorism. And uh, we can also have a partnership uh, on that issue. Uh, I will not enter uh, into the details of what we are uh, discussing uh, with our neighbor Greece. We have some problems, we have some objections, but our dialogue channels are wide open. And uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, Mr. Minister will visit my country uh, soon. Uh, then we will continue to make use of all the channels. And personally speaking, of course, uh, the deal is there, but the deal must be implemented and updated, revised or whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. 
Um, I think we would move on to the, to, the, to the second question, which was to ask for uh, your views on um, the words of Mr. Uh, Dr. Abu Abdullah Abdullah uh, about working with the Taliban. Uh, would anybody like, or, or engaging uh, with them, would anybody like to take the floor first in the panel? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Deputy Minister, Let please. Let me start. Yes, uh, the Tajikistan does not uh, recognize the Taliban regime at this point in, point in time. So uh, the Tajikistan will only recognize the inclusive government, the broader engagement of all the ethnic, <coughs> social uh, groups and religious communities. That's, that's our position. Mm -hmm. But in terms of humanitarian aid, so we are, as I mentioned, so we are ready to provide all our communications means for the uh, Afghan people. Thank you. Uh, well, I think the, the first and foremost, and foremost question is how to help Afghans to rebuild their society in a more stable fashion. Uh, as regards Iran, we have uh, creating many platforms, uh, tables, open, offering many tables. We have had last July a, an Afghan-led, Afghan-owned pro process in Tehran, all groups, including Taliban, were uh, discussing with each other, including the, the former central government and the others. Uh, uh, we, we are going to have the ministerial meetings of the foreign ministers of the, uh, all uh, neighboring countries of Afghanistan next Wednesday in Tehran. And we, we, we have uh, been saying time and again that the only solution for Afghan is an all-inclusive stable Afghan-led, Afghan-owned process to rebuild their own society. And we have no capacity unless to help them achieve that goal. And this is, this is how we look into the situation. But when it comes to the humanitarian needs, as, as uh, Excellency, the Deputy Minister of Tajikistan mentioned, we, we are ready to work with anybody because the humanitarian consideration has no limit in terms of the political uh, observations. Um, please, if, if you go through, through the basic principles of humanitarian law, you will uh, render your assistance to your enemies when you are in war. And that's, that's a distinct uh, point of, I mean, a different point. If I may touch just one point regarding the recent massive flow of migrants and uh, refugees, uh, because uh, I should touch upon this as well. Uh, we have been witnessing a massive flow of migrants and refugees coming to Iran, uh, many times more than the, the, the ordinary one. Uh, unfortunately, this massive flow, while has been uh, recognized and reaffirmed by Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, has not well publicized uh, here and worldwide for the specific reasons, and I understand uh, this, this critical juncture has uh, made lots of difficulties for Iran to be in a position to accept more. And this is a, a warning for everybody to think about it uh, twice and uh, revisit the, the, the policies uh, like the ones that have been publicly announced by the Europeans recently that they are not in a position to, to accept more Afghans. I think. Uh, this, this creates more miserable situation for Afghan people. And since Iran has done uh, beyond its fair share, I think uh, it's time to revisit the issue and everybody mm, fulfill its own shares and responsibility on the basis of uh, fair share. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, you. would you like also to talk about uh, recognizing Taliban regime or not on behalf of Turkey? As I, as I just mentioned, uh, this, this, there must be a gradual approach, Mr. Director General. I mean, uh, the, the, the first thing is ensuring uh, the good governance uh, in Afghanistan. The reality is that without talking with Taliban, you cannot influence anything. And uh, without talking with Taliban, you cannot conduct any humanitarian uh, operations. Uh, uh, therefore, um, 
we are not suggesting. This is what we are doing. And this is why I uh, shared with you that last week, Taliban's foreign minister uh, was in Ankara. Uh, we are discussing. We do not think that that means recognition. And uh, we need to find practical ways to do business. And this is the first thing, because winter is approaching. Uh, the, the humanitarian situation is very critical. And before having the situation uh, more complicated or less manageable, uh, we need to make use of all the channels, all possible channels. And uh, again, to this end, we are keeping our embassy open in Kabul. And we will continue this way, and that will be our advice to all our, all our partners, without getting stuck with the issue of uh, recognition or not. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think we would also take some questions from the online audience, I believe. Um, at this time, shall I? Um, yes, uh, let me take the first one. Uh, the, the Tajikistan, as I mentioned, uh, received all, already more than 15,000 refugees, and we also supported uh, Afghan citizens and also the foreign citizens who wanted to leave Afghanistan to the third countries, um, especially women and girls and children as well. Also, we are hosting uh, also some um, part of uh, international organizations who are already left the Afghanistan. So, and we established their offices in, we are hosting their offices in Dushanbe, in Tajikistan, our capital city. Mm -hmm. In terms of second questions, uh, I would like to say that the Tajikistan faces its own uh, challenges. Uh, with the, I mean, the absorption capacity of Tajikistan to receive, to receive the refugees is very limited. So we need to more support from our uh, development partners, uh, donors, countries, in order to be ready to, I would say, to address the challenges uh, and threats that are coming from Afghanistan. So it's not about only uh, migration. There is an uh, issue of uh, terrorists and extremist ideologies who may come and enter to, the, to, to our territory under the cover of, the, of, of refugees. So there is another, another uh, challenge to us. And uh, it's, as I mentioned, uh, I mean, the Afghanistan population consists not only on uh, one ethnical, ethnical uh, groups, so more than 40% of population are Tajiks, and this must be taken into account to form an inclusive and broader and wider engagement uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Afghanistan. Thank you. May I, may I have your permission just to add one word to what I have uh, uh, answered uh, to, to, to our friends? I received a note uh, reminding me that in March uh, we have made some proposals to the European Union in the context of revitalization uh, of, the, of the deal. We are uh, still waiting uh, the reaction by the EU side. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. I think uh, we will conclude uh, in the uh, last statement from, uh, yeah. from our colleagues. There you can also answer the outstanding question. And this would be the question just no, to I wrap up. The, I'm, I'm seeing two online questions. I, I, it has not been addressed to me. <laughs> that's right, that's are, right. Are we going to... Just one moment, okay, Mr. Sorry, Ambassador. Sorry. What we would be interested so much is what do you expect concretely about a partnership with your countries, especially from Europe? I think uh, we need money that we know, but what it is uh, in addition? I think we all no, uh, money makes the world go round, we know that, but uh, this is not what partnership really is about. Partnership mm. is much more. What do you expect really that we could deliver for the next few years? Maybe one minute to everybody yeah. here on the podium just uh, to get some impression about this. Yeah, Maybe out of the important it. tool of money which everybody needs, especially because of the pandemic, we know need more money to, to, to uh, have our economy recovered, Every, everybody in the world. But uh, as you refer to the EU, Iran, 
partnership in times of migration and, and refugees. I understand uh, there are some basic, if, if we can uh, continue our dialogue, we are ready to continue our dialogue with the European Union and the European countries bilaterally and through Brussels. Uh, we should uh, come to a, some basic common principles. Uh, I have touched upon some of them, as I mentioned, the newly uh, publicly announced policy of the European is detrimental to the, to the worsening situation of Afghan refugees, Afghan people in, in, uh, in, in the region. I think trying Europe to maintain the uh, Afghan refugees uh, around the region while the countries of the region, all of them, have been facing with multifaceted challenges uh, in one way or another would be a, a, a would not be a good point of departure. This is this is the first point. The second point, as I mentioned, uh, when I'm saying, for example, the the equipments, uh, I'm saying that uh, at the common interest of Iran and EU. Just look at the uh, the flow of drug trafficking. The final destination is is uh, Europe, and we are paying a lot in terms of human resources, in terms of uh, financial assets and many other uh, social economic challenges we are facing to defeat the drug traffickers. And I, uh, I hope I'm, I'm not right that the, the current situation and the new uh, emerging situation would, would create more uh, safe havens for the drug traffickers uh, coming from Afghanistan. And this is the point that I think if, if you want uh, to hear from me out of money. We need uh, some, some equipment to control our borders uh, at the joint interest, but uh, in one sentence, we are uh, ready and open to continue dialogue with, with European Union and the European countries to, to find a, uh, some common basic principles on the basis of which we can define some projects, ideas, and plans. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, please. Uh, also raise the my, my, my answer, Mr. Director General, will be money plus. Uh, uh, for us now, the, the focus, as I have just mentioned, uh, is, uh, is to ensure the safe return, voluntary and safe return of, uh, of refugees. Uh, and this is an important step. And then we made some calls. And uh, this is directly linked to the, to the talks regarding the future of Syria uh, in, 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 in our cases. I think there is room for international cooperation uh, on, the, on this issue. We, uh, we are not happy to, 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 to see that some countries uh, uh, tend to put uh, the political solution first and then the return of displaced uh, uh, persons uh, to second. Uh, if we wait until after the political solution, uh, it, can be, it can be too late. And this will not alleviate our burden. This is why, uh, as I've said, we have already built 40,000 uh, houses uh, in the area near to Idlib and then uh, to the area cleared of uh, terrorism, Daesh terrorism or any other terrorism. And uh, we, you know that we are very active in fighting against PKK, PYD, Daesh. And uh, I have to tell that we have eliminated more than 3,000 Daesh uh, terrorists uh, there. So if the interna international community uh, wanted to play a decisive role, and if we really want to make a significant uh, step forward, and then we need to start working on, on the uh, uh, return uh, of, uh, of displaced uh, persons. There is room for that. Uh, but uh, we also believe that this can also help the political process uh, to find a, a solution uh, to the uh, Syrian problem. But as I've said, I don't want to get away from uh, today's topic. This is why I did, did not enter into this. Yes, efficient, genuine international cooperation, including financial aspects, but taking serious uh, steps uh, to ensure 
voluntary and safe return of uh, refugees. I, every time I uh, keep repeating this, I mean voluntary and safe, this is e extremely important. No one will be forced to go back uh, if necessary conditions are not created. But we need to make use of the places of Syria where we secured, uh, then we can start working on that. This call was made by my government and I take this opportunity to, to repeat it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Same question to you, Mr. Deputy Minister. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Tajikistan, um, there is a need uh, for infrastructure, right? To receive, to receive refugees, we need to have a proper infrastructure, electricity supply, water supply, and also there is a climate change risks, uh, and they may be on that uh, part of uh, the Taj Tajikistan that might have received the re refugees. And uh, I mean, there would not be uh, sustainable development of Central Asia without the peace and stability in, in, in Afghanistan. Therefore, so we need to react more collectively in, in, in Central Asian region. Thank you. Thank you very much. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we can conclude uh, this discussion about Afghanistan. I would like uh, to thank all the panelists for their contribution. Please give them a big applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you.